the psalmist says, I have made. Knowing where to go for refuge is one thing. But once you make it your place of refuge, then it becomes more than just something you think about or talk about. And this is where we're going to get into the message this morning. Uh, there's a hole in my roof. There's, all of a sudden I've got a lot of smiles going on around here. There's a hole in my roof. Actually, it's there's a hole in the roof. There's a hole in the roof. So, um, this is found in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 26. so old school. I got my notes all spread out up here. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't do this with an iPad. It just wouldn't work. Right. Yeah, I'd be going. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I can see the whole thing right here. Great. I like my instrument panel where I can see the whole thing and I can <laughs> follow what I need to watch. Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 26. Jesus and his followers went into Capernaum. Immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and started teaching. People were amazed by his teaching, for he was teaching them with authority. And I am looking at the... Well, this is okay. We can do Mark 1, 21 to 26. Um, this is okay. Uh, let's see, he was teaching in the synagogue, teaching them with authority, not like the legal experts. Suddenly there in the synagogue, a person with an evil spirit screamed, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One from God. Silence! Jesus said, speaking harshly to the demon, Come out of him! The unclean spirit shook him and screamed, then it came out. In the synagogue. During a teaching time, there was a demon-possessed individual, and there was a hole made for the Word of God to get in and for the bad thing to get out. Okay? Rending a hole in a spiritual environment. And, the, and if we'll go down to Mark chapter 2, verses 2 through 12... I'm going to use the physical example to demonstrate the spiritual reality. This is what God always does. He, he demonstrates the reality of the spiritual through physical stuff. Okay? Right. Okay. So Mark 2, just one page over, I hope, or maybe on this. Never mind. Mark chapter 2, verses 2 through 12. Um, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. Straight away, many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And uh, they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was uh, born of four. Uh, that sick of the palsy, he was just going. And four of his buddies. Carry him to where Jesus was. And they came to him, bringing one sick of the palsy. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, in other words, there's a big crowd, couldn't get into the door, they got up on the rooftop, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, I mean, they didn't just take a shingle off, I mean, it says they broke it up. We're going to make a hole here. <laughs> We're going to make a hole in the roof. They broke it up. They let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. 
But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, why does, why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, Arise, take up your bed, go your way into your house. And immediately he rose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. And there's a hole in the roof. And there's a hole in the roof. In a sum, in summation, you could say there's a hole in the roof, and a walking paralytic is taking his mat home. There's a hole in the roof, but somebody who was paralyzed is now on the way home, taking his bed home. And so many times we hear about you know, what what Jesus did in the house, and to me, there's. There's a little bit of an understanding here that I think God's given me for what happened in this place at that time. If you notice, forgiving the man's sins was the first thing on Jesus' mind right. mm -hmm. when they lowered that man down into the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead now. Okay. Basically, that means exactly what it says. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, your sins are forgiven. Now, there's a lot of instances where the Lord healed a, you know, there was a, a son that was dead, and his mom was taking him out to bury him, and the Lord had compassion and raised the boy. There was a woman that was caught in adultery, and Jesus just scribbled on the ground. And he says, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. There was the guy at the pool of Bethesda <clears throat> who couldn't get into the water soon enough. And the Lord came along and healed him. The man found him a little bit later. And the Lord says, uh, remember what I did for you and don't sin anymore. At least the worst thing come upon you. There was a blind man on the roadside where the Lord came by and his disciples wanted to know, well, who, who sinned, him or his, his parents, that he would be born this way? And the Lord said, neither, but that my glory should be manifest in him. And he, he spit on the ground, made some clay, swooshed it on the guy's eyes and said, go wash at the pool of Siloam. And the guy said, you're right, I'm going to go wash. You know, could you imagine that in a COVID uh, environment? I'm sorry, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, some people are, you know, they're connecting the dots on no, that. Oh, no. Not the spirit. <laughs> what's more important to God? Your faith? That's what's more important. Faith, faith leads to obedience. And obedience based on faith produces dramatic results. In the presence of God. So he did a lot of, he did so many different, so many wonderful things. In this case, first order of business, he saw their faith and he said to the paralyzed guy, your sins are forgiven. So apparently not just the four friends that lowered him through the roof had faith, but the paralyzed guy had faith. Right. There were Five people full of faith that day that said, we got to get you into the presence of the Lord. And if you'll, if you'll read this, one thing that's not said here is he didn't ask him what he needed. The Lord didn't ask him, so, you know, why have you lowered this guy into my presence? 
I think the unsaid message is that he's paralyzed, but solving the sin question is the important thing. Right. We need to have our sins forgiven. Right. We need to have this sin situation taken care of. Right. We need to have sin out of the situation. And the Lord said, and he did that, and that was as far as the Lord was going to go. But the but the the hotshot religious leaders in the room said, well, "Who do you think you are?" And so he said, "Well, I know who I am, and you don't know who I am, but but that you may know that I have not only power to forgive sins, which is the number one priority." He said, "Take up your bed, head on out of here." So much is wrapped up in this thing that Jesus did. Amen. And I, the point that I want to get across to us here is, let's take a look at it from the homeowner's point of view. Let's take a look at this from the homeowner's point of view. Jesus came today. And I got a hole in my roof. Jeez. Who's going to fix it? Well, that could be one of the things that people look at. Or the guy that owns the house could allow a hole in his ego to push aside the hole in his roof and rejoice in a paralyzed person that has their sins forgiven yes. is now walking home and is not subject to sin or that sickness that was on him and he could put a hole in his ego while he says, hey, there was a sick man here, but Jesus healed. I'm going to put that shingle back. There was a paralyzed man here, and his sins were forgiven. I'm going to put that stick back. And he began to repair the roof, putting a hole in his ego, instead of saying, why did you tear a hole in my roof, God? What's with that? And it was rather, hey, I will suffer the breaking up of my roof to see a miracle of God. Yeah. Even though I didn't know that was going to happen. I'm sure the homeowner, when the roof was being torn up, was going... And then here comes the paralyzed man. And sins are forgiven. And the guy gets up and he had a choice to say hallelujah. Right. Or to say who's going to fix this. If God provided the wherewithal to forgive the man's sins, don't you think that a community, a community could join together? To help rejoice yes. and make a memorial out of the hole in the roof yes. rather than a complaint about, look what you did to my life, God. Jesus, yes. thank you, Lord. Yes. Glory. Thank you, Lord. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> the catchphrase, when Jesus saw their faith, I want God to see my faith. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why when the songs come up, we I, I want to sing the message in the song. I, I want it's not that I'm trying to I'm not trying to get God's attention, but I have learned that if I will have faith in God, yeah, there may be a hole in my roof, but I've got faith in God that what appears to be a damaged house in the eyes of the world can turn into a memorial of the miraculous in the eyes of God. Praise it God. just depends on whether or not I make what God did my refuge. Right. Praise, God. Woo! Praise, Praise God. God. When God sees my faith, wonderful things happen. Yes. Yes. That's true. Praise God. When God sees my faith, 
wonderful things. You are my refuge. You are my sanctuary. Where does that refuge start? It starts in here. Thank you, Jesus. I know there's so much that needs to happen in this community. There's so much that needs to happen in our lives. There's so much that needs to happen seemingly every day. But when God sees my faith, start off your day with faith. Start off your day with, I don't know how all this is going to work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't know how it's all going to work out. It seems like somebody made a hole in my roof. <laughs> you know, maybe the homeowner was away on a vacation. He comes back and, what happened here? And somebody that was there said, let me tell you what Jesus did. You know, you get that, you don't, you get the phone call you don't want to get, but you don't know you don't want to get it until you actually get it. What happened here? And somebody says, let me tell you what Jesus did. Oh, I want to build a memorial here. Jesus stepped into my house. And then he said, I'm going to tear your roof off for a little bit. All right. What's the roof of my house? My ego. If I will allow my ego to get a hole ripped in it, so that my life can be a place of hospitality toward God and ministering to others, then wonderful things can happen. Um, in Galatians it says, Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. That's Galatians 2. Nevertheless, I live. You know, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Well, how does Christ get in? Got to be a hole in my roof. <laughs> come in through the door. Come in through a window. Come in through a hole in the roof. I don't care. Some people come to God because their life is a hole in the roof catastrophe. Some people come to God because they heard Him knocking on the door and they opened up and said, come on in. Some people come to God because they were window shopping at the streets of heaven and they heard something beyond the window and they flipped it open and said, can that come in here? And the Lord says, by door, by window, by roof, I will come in and I'll have fellowship with you and wonderful Woo! things can happen. My, my, my. <laughs> Praise God. So again, he put the scribes in their place at the same time. He, I mean, the statement was he put the scribes in their place at the same time. Here, what he, you know, look, this is what he said to them. He says, "I know what you're thinking." Uh, verse eight, he says, "Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves." You know, it's called a spiritual pickup. You pick up on something. You know how you, you, you can pick up on things that are coming from other people? Sure. Um, I was looking at a video about the Blue Angels. The lead, the lead pilot in the Blue Angels, they are from wingtip to canopy 18 inches apart at 400 miles an hour. Oh my goodness. And the lead pilot, he's focusing on everything happening. He doesn't see He's not looking around to see where everybody else is. Why? Because everybody else is focusing on the lead pilot, on the lead plane. They're focusing on where am I in relation to the lead aircraft. And the lead pilot says, we are so connected that I can tell when somebody is three inches off. And I don't even have to look. Talking about picking up 
up on something. Now that's a real world example and it really does happen. The church, can we be so synchronized that when God moves through here, He picks up on whether or not you're three inches or three miles from where you need to be. And He says, let's get back in formation. Yes. Let's get back where we need to be. Yes. Because it's not that we're putting on a demonstration for the world. It's that the world's going to see just how tight and close-knit a real functioning church of the living ah. God can be. Yes. Boom. Yes. That. We're not putting on a show for the world. We're staying locked in and focused on the lead. Amen. And the world sees it. And when the planes land, nobody in that formation saw what the formation looked like from the ground. All they know is I stayed locked on to the, I stayed locked on to the leader. And the leader knows where he's going. That's so good. So good. So good. First Peter says. Four, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. The whole order was hospitable to the Lord, even though there's a hole in the roof. Right. If, if some circumstance punches a hole in your ego so that a need can be revealed in the presence of God, make a memorial out of it. Don't make it a, a, sure. an opportunity to just write and complain. Right. You know, there's a lot of things in life I don't want to have happen to me. I don't like having a, a tooth missing in my jaw. But... If there's an opportunity to be a witness to somebody, right? And they, you know, I may never hear what they what they have to say about it. But if I'll have God as my refuge, saying, "Lord, you know, there's a hole in my mouth here. There's a tooth that's supposed to be here, but it's not here." I'd open my mouth wide and point it at the camera, but that'd be gross. Thank you. Much appreciated. <clears throat> in everything, give thanks. My tooth is gone. I gotta go in for surgery next month. Thank God that they have a procedure to be able to help with the situation is. My wife is recovering from knee surgery. Thank God they've got titanium that can fit whatever the need is. Thank God that there's vaccines out there that can help people through this and that. However, through it all, circumstances can come my way. That seem to just knock a hole in my roof. <clears throat> and if it lets something from God get in and a miracle comes out, then <clears throat> when God sees my faith, wonderful things can happen. Yeah. And faith in the midst of a storm tossed life is what really does wonderful things. Yeah. It allows yeah. wonderful yeah. things to happen. Yeah. Faith in the midst of a storm-tossed life. There's a hole in my roof. There's a price of hospitality towards God and ministering to others. Those carrying the paralytic man made the journey to where Jesus was and then had to find a way to get Jesus to notice their friend. How did they do that? Faith. Faith. By faith we come to church. By faith we dial in on the internet. By faith we lift our hands in praise. By faith we take our medicine. By faith we deal with the, the, the demise of the physical body. By faith we, we keep telling ourselves, Jesus is my faithful friend. He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. By faith. I keep going into the sanctuary of the Lord because don't you know slippery conditions are out there. Amen. Yes, they are. There's also another hole that proves God's hospitality toward us. There's a hole in the side of the Word of God made flesh. He had faith. 
My God had faith in us. He calls us the faithful. Why? He's prophetically saying, you have the ability to be full of faith today and as long as you live in this life, you have the ability, you have the potential to be full of faith, to be faithful Amen. to the things that are true. You've got that, you have that potential. Yeah. I make a hole in my ego so that the hole that God ministered through his flesh has an opportunity to enter into my life. Whoo! I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you all alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Who lays me down? Me. I lay me down. There's a hole in my roof. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! There's a hole in the roof. Oh, let the blessings flow. Let the blessings flow. Um, John 20, 26 to 27, after eight days again, his disciples were within. Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Oh, how we close ourselves in when the times around us become just too much to deal with. I remember when I got the call that my dad passed away. I remember when I got the call that my mother just suffered another stroke. And Jesus stood in the midst to tell me, peace be still. If you'll have faith, have faith in me and let me deal with the things you can't deal with. Let me take care of the things that are outside of your control. Wow. If you will just have faith in me, then you will be what you need to be. You will have stability. You will have the wherewithal to be able to say, Amen. So be it unto me, thy will be done, O God. Because I can't bring anybody back. Jesus says, Peace unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither your finger, behold my hands. In other words, put your finger in the hole in my hands. And behold, and, and reach hither your hand. And thrust it into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. I made a hole in here. Guess what? In that resurrected body, there were holes in his hands, holes in his feet, and a hole big enough for you to put your hand in, in his side. There were holes in the Lord because he said, if you will allow there to be an entryway into your life, I made an entryway out of this life so it can get into your life. The blood and water of the word of God made flesh was let out onto and into the dust of the earth. Out of Adam's side, God formed Eve. And out of the side of the Word of God made flesh, God formed His bride, the church. Mm. Hallelujah. It's beautiful. Let me ask you this. Were the results worth the price? Jesus. Sometimes we focus on how do I repair that hole in my ego rather than how do I make a memorial out of where I let the gracious love of God get into my life where it can do wonderful, marvelous, fantastic, miraculous things when 
God sees my faith. Wonderful things happen. I cannot, I, I can't afford to put a wall up, to close a door, to shut a window, to seal a roof. If the miracles of God want to get in, right. I can't afford to do that. Right. I can't afford to shut myself out when I really need to have a hole in my roof. Were the results worth the price? That's up to the individual. A hole in a roof can be repaired and made into a memorial. The hole in the side of Jesus was not repaired. It remains open today. Jesus came to us. He made the journey. He allowed a hole to be made in his side so he could come to us and allow us complete access to him. Right. Is my salvation worth the price God paid for? Come on. Amen. If it's worth the price, thank God for the hole in my roof. Yes. If it's worth the price, count the cost. Is it, is it really worth the price? Hallelujah. Are my tears worth the price? Is my... Breaking of my will worth the price? Hallelujah. Is my kneeling, is my prostrating myself before the Lord worth the price? Is my submission to the things of God worth the price? I can't answer that for anybody in the room. I can only tell you, I have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Is there a hole in my heart yes. big enough to allow the needs of a sin-sick soul to touch me? Hallelujah, Jesus. Is there a hole in my heart big enough to allow the needs of a sin-sick world, of another sin-sick soul to reach in and touch me to where something wonderful from God could flow out of me into that life. And some paralytic could be walking sin free on their way home. Rejoicing in the fact that Jesus did something beyond my wildest expectation or desire. And I am now somebody that I never thought I could be. Is there a hole in my heart big enough to count that price and see that it's worth it? Paul said, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The Lord has a way of suddenly appearing. <laughs> Malachi chapter 3. You want your life to be blessed? Amen. Then bring all the tithes into the storehouse. You've been struggling so, so long on your own. You've been fighting the battle so long on your own when the real value in your life is bringing your treasure into the storehouse of God. Finding that place of refuge. Breaking up the roof of your ego to say, I'm going to invest. Woo! I'm going to invest in the things of God. And then things, wonderful things happen. God provides needs that I never knew I had. God makes a way where there just doesn't seem to be a way. For me, there was a day when I needed something from God. I was I was where that was slippery slope and about to you know, tumble down and I lost my balance. And, and there was, you know... God sent somebody down our road over there at 1655 Marshall Avenue uh, in 2004 and said, Hey, looked at your house for a long time, wanted to buy it. Can I make an offer on it? I could say, Get out of here. Who do you think you are? Or I could make a hole in my roof. Guess what? The roof had already been ripped off by all the turmoil I'd been through. I can look at that and say, who's going to fix that? 
Or I could be reminded, God said, I have, I know all your needs, and I will provide for all of your needs according to my riches and glory. Yes. I could choose to say amen to that or just bellyache about a ruined life. grace of God, we're still here. And there's a hole in my roof. He said, God said he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there won't be room to contain it. And he's also made an access into the heavens in Revelation 4. Behold a door opened in heaven. The voice which I heard as a trumpet called to me and said, Come up higher, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. I can't tell you how to value the hole in your roof. All I can say is, you can make a memorial, or you can turn it into a GoFundMe account.
somebody down and uh, you'll take care of the roof God yes you'll take care of all of the all the other stuff that goes along with that because what's important is seeking and saving that which was lost destroying the works of the devil Lord I thank you for helping us to join together closely uh, be focused on you as the lead let the world see a church that really does know what it means to be tight-knit, cohesive, and supportive of one another. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. We're going to leave the live stream.